Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new classic Doctor Who review where this week we're getting right to the middle of season 13 of Doctor Who with the android invasion. So yes this is a story that I think generally isn't actually that highly rated by fans and last time I watched it it was probably four or five years ago I didn't have particularly positive recollections of it like I remember it being okay but nothing special but actually on this particular rewatch I thoroughly enjoyed it. So of course this story sees the Doctor and Sarah turn up on what was seemingly Earth at the beginning of the story, um, end up going for a little wander around, find discovering a little village with seemingly no people, and then all the people get carted in um, on a truck, and we find out later on, of course, that they are androids. Um, a story very heavily focused on androids throughout, with this alien race called the Krolls, who are controlling them and basically want to come in and take over the Earth. So in many ways, a kind of classic alien invasion of Earth plotline that we've seen many times before in Doctor Who. But I don't know, I just felt like as a whole sort of idea and a well put together piece of television, it is actually very, very entertaining and kind of kept me engaged throughout. So firstly, I think in particular, a lot of the location filming was done really, really effectively. The, the sort of little village that it was set in was, I think, a really um, visually interesting one to be able to go to and just, they did a great job of kind of showing the great sort of um, des desolate nature of this place where there really is just no people or anything around anywhere. Um, I thought that was very, very good in establishing the initial setting and also convincing you that it was really Earth um, early on in the story. The same with the kind of unit space or the, or the space centre that they were using as well um, that unit was based at was also, I thought, a pretty um, effective set or of location to be able to use to have some great action sequences with the Doctor jumping around off buildings and androids shooting at him and everything and unit soldiers shooting at him as well. There were some real great scenes around that point as well, which I think really helped the story from an action point of view. I think um, a general criticism from most people sort of of their biggest problems with this story are the pure plot and idea behind it. And I think there are aspects that don't work and there are aspects that do work. I think the crawl alien invasion idea isn't isn't terrible in any way. I think the idea of using this um, astronaut, sort of returning him to Earth, and then this, and sending some androids down, taking over people's positions, and then bringing the crawl invasion fleet in and taking over the Earth doesn't sound like an awful idea. I think that's pretty standard Doctor Who alien race trying to take over Earth plot. Um, the key thing that, of course, does not work at all is Guy Crayford's eye. Um, this ridiculous, I'm not going to lie, it's completely ridiculous, the res revel revelation in episode 4 that um, actually he really he does have an eye below that eye patch when apparently he didn't. And in two years he's just happened to never take that eye patch off, never wash his whole face, go for a shower anything like that to make him realise that actually, oh yeah, he doesn't have an eye there. Um, so that was clearly pretty unbelievable and a little bit of a stretch and struggle. But um, I don't feel like it completely detracted from the plot. I just kind of laughed and thought, yeah, that's a bit ridiculous. But actually there were lots of sort of fascinating ideas, lots of different kind of opportunities to use the androids. They're, they're really creepy sort of vibe when you see them all walking into the pub and then setting down and being completely kind of frozen and motionless until the clock strikes and then they all sort of kind of spring into action and seemingly completely normal until then obviously the Doctor and Sarah try to interact and it all gets a little bit weird but it's just a really really cool and freaky idea I think. Also the idea of the calendar always being I think it's the 6th of July um, just giving us another little hint that actually this isn't all as it seems despite what we initially thought. Um, and of course this story also brings back um, Ian Marta as Harry Sullivan and um, John Levine as Sergeant Benton, or Mr. Benton by this point, um, into the show for what actually turns out to be both for both the characters their final appearances. Now this is something that Philip Hinchcliffe talks about in the documentary about the making of this story and I think it's something that in particular is a real shame and a disappointment with this story is that um, Mr. Benton and uh, Harry Sullivan don't get any sort of send-off in this story. For most of it they're only really playing android versions of themselves and there's only I think a very brief scene at the end of episode 4 where they're both actually playing their real selves. And I think it, it was simply because although Philip Hinchcliffe wanted to move away from the unit, sort of um, set of people and, and doing stories related to units, they it was kind of his thought that probably at some point in the future they'd someone, another producer, would come and take unit back again and bring all these characters back. But actually it never happened. So it meant that it was a kind of rather going out with a whimper type um, appearance for both Mr. Benson and Harry Sullivan um, in, in Martin John Levine's characters. Um, but yeah, they were just really kind of left to the side and then forgotten about and that was it. We never see them again in Doctor Who. So I, that there is no, I think it, it purely kind of happened by accident more than anything else, but it definitely is a real shame that we didn't get to see more of a great send off for them. And of course, it's a shame that the, um, the Brigadier wasn't in the story at all as well. They very much wanted to have him, just he wasn't available for filming at the time. And I think it could have just made it feel kind of more like a standard unit story if we'd had um, the Brigadier there as well. It just would have had that extra element rather than in episode four, that sort of unit, an army general who was clearly meant to be playing the same character as a Brigadier, just not called him. And in, in like the way he spoke, his mannerisms, and everything is then generally 
general appearance. It was so like the Brigadier. I, I was kind of almost surprised and felt it was a bit weird. I'd rather they would have done something a little bit different and had a, an army general who just looked visually very different to the Brigadier. Uh, but I don't think that quite worked personally. I know another thing the production team weren't very happy at the time as well was with the actual Krolls themselves, the visual appearance of the Krolls. And I, I personally don't really get it. I think they look pretty solid alien alien races. They're kind of like the original rhino, rhinoceros-type aliens before we got the Jadoon, of course. Um, but before that, I, d I just don't don't really see the problem. Yeah, it's not the greatest costume ever in Doctor Who, but it's, I didn't think it was particularly awful. And I felt as a race of... Oh, I mean, we only really see two of them, of course, apart from I think another one appears briefly but doesn't say anything. Um, so they're hardly heavily involved, um, or there's not a real army race of them. But I still think that it work, they, they, they work fairly effectively in a real a reasonable screen presence throughout the story. I do think the various scenes showing both um, Sarah Jane and the Doctor as androids in this story are really, really creepy and effective. And particularly that cliffhanger, I think it's the end of, I can't remember the end of part two or part three. I think it's part two where um, the android version of Sarah gets pushed away by the Doctor, falls onto the floor and her face drops off. That's such, must have been such a horrifying moment for a young, sort of young fan at the time to be watching that and seeing that happening. I think it's just such a, a clever way of doing it, I think, and really just bringing out the horror aspect of this story. Um, into the show and just it's just always that slightly creepy vibe when you've got these sort of um you're seemingly the heroes of the show are actually playing the villains in these moments and I think both Tom and Elizabeth did a great job in just the vision so there's just a slightly different look they had to themselves when they were playing androids to when they were playing their normal characters I think that just added something a real just the extra ingredient that it needed to really work in this story and one of the biggest things I always tend to judge Doctor Who stories by is how much it kind of keeps my attention and keeps me engaged throughout the story particularly in the classic series and for this story I was felt I was engaged throughout I felt these first two episodes were very mysterious as we gradually start to learn what's going on eventually finding out this isn't Earth, understanding how, the, how they're all androids and all of that, and then eventually when Earth is, or the, the fake Earth is wiped out, and then um, the Doctor and Sarah, and then into the latter part of the story where they're all actually going to go and do the proper invasion of Earth and turning up on real Earth, it just, it just kept me going all the way through, and I think it just was a quite a not too focused on one aspect and kind of gradually built through the story, which I thought worked really well. Of course, there's no denying that it uses lots of the classic Terry Nation tropes of, of androids, of viruses, of just a, f a story full of action sequences. Um, but I don't think that's to any real detriment to the story. This is this is the only story apart from Keys and Marinus that, that Terry Nation wrote that wasn't a Dalek story. And I think that actually he was a genuinely really good writer. Um, he I'd Probably he's better at kind of writing action scenes without dialogue, quite frankly, than dialogue, the sort of pure dialogue scenes. Um, but I do think that just the action scenes he incorporates into the story can give it a real kind of exciting and push and an extra element to it to keep it entertaining and keep you interested in it throughout. So yes, overall, this is um, a story that I think is much stronger than a lot of fans think. It was one that I very much enjoyed more than I was expecting, quite frankly, and more than I'd remembered previously. So I was kind of one of, those, one of the few stories where I was rather pleasantly surprised in how good it was. But guys, please do let me know in the comments below what you think of it, whether you think it's very much on the sort of lesser level that sort of a lot of fans seem to think it is, or actually whether if you're like me and you actually did enjoy it quite a bit more. I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. But apart from that, guys, as always, hit that like button, that's a scrum if you're new here, and I'll see you again very soon for another one. Goodbye.